All right, box beam. So you all saw an implosion. Two and a half kilos of resin, Oliver. Mm. It's a fair amount, eh? It's chomping some resin pretty fast. Oh, shit. Just imploded. Here is our complete finished box beam. So this is actually the original imploded piece that you saw in our previous video. And Shane has managed to resurrect it. And I was going to show you the video of how he did that. However, we've had a lot of questions regarding um, the implosion. So I thought before I show the solution as to how Shane got uh, this fixed, um, we might sort of address a few issues. Um, you know, why did we make it a hollow section? Why did we choose to infuse it when that was clearly fraught with danger? Um, and um, why we didn't hand laminate it, etc., etc. So this is a bit of a deep dive into answering a few of the questions that you guys had on um, on our previous video. If you do want to see um, the next video on how we fixed it, um, I'll put it on our members site first. So this week it'll be on the members site and then next week we'll make it live for everyone else. Okay, so let's go grab Shane and ask a few questions. Okay, so here's our finished beam and it's still hollow and we've got the whole, Shane's got his, oh, I've just finished the video on the resurrection because this is the original beam. You ended up not having to tear it all down. We did have to take, you did take the, um, all the glass off while it was, before it cured completely. So we were back to the bare foam, but Shane did manage to fix it all and it looks amazing. But we did have a few questions on um, the video on the implosion. So before we show you how Shane fixed this, um, I just want to answer a few of those questions. And I'm just going to read them out, Shane. Are you ready? And you see how quickly you can answer them. Me, me quickly answer yeah. the question. No though, waffle. No waffle. Okay, ready? Why you, did you make the foam structure hollow instead of a solid foam structure? Okay, that one's pretty simple. Uh, weight and cost. Okay, if I was to make this solid with the same foam that I'm using here, I would have needed to use eight times more foam material. So it would have been eight times heavier than the hollow version. And because I'm using eight times more material, it also equals or equates to it would have been eight times more expensive. So um, the hollow option is a win-win in regards to weight and cost and our main driving criteria is weight and cost so yeah yeah we're chasing performance and to get performance on this boat is all about um keeping the weight down yeah and keeping it strong and of course we have a budget <laughs> yeah okay all right um tubular bagging inside would that have helped um yes and no so this isn't a straight answer sorry um Yes, I could have bladder bagged this uh, if I had an open end to work with. But this beam is closed at the top and the bottom. So that would have meant that I would have had to have had a small exit hole. And to have a bladder bag in there with small exit holes is a bit of a nightmare to make sure that the bladder bag uh, expands and fills all the gaps. Otherwise, you end up with exactly the same problem. And we have had parts in the past where we have had bladder bags not fully fill and either one or two things happen the bladder bag blows or the uh, structure that it's not pressing out against uh, cracks crushes implodes like you saw um, then also with the, our double-ended closed cavity the uh, I would have had to have then gone back and post processed and repaired where the bladder came out if you can get the bladder out as well because it's when you've got bladders and you've got tacky tape and all the rest of it, it's very difficult to get this little big little lump of plastic and tacky tape out through small openings. So um, it wasn't a very viable option to, to put a bladder bag in there. Okay. Would it be possible to use a less dense core foam and just make it a solid part? 
Okay, yeah, okay. So this is a, a good question and a very simple one to answer. And this one comes back to a lot of experience. I've infused a lot of parts over the years and we have learned uh, what density works, doesn't work. 80 kilo, you're pretty much safe as houses, infusing on it, never gonna crush it um, type thing. Yeah, we run a lot of 80 kilo. So yeah, 80 kilos like is here. the standard and it's very workable. It's quite tough and all the rest of it. And you won't crush it. Imploding it like this is different to crushing it, okay? So if I made this solid out of 80 kilo, or if I vacuum big either side of an 80 kilo foam, I'm not gonna crush it, right? If I go down to 60 kilo, I'm right on the limit. And there's obviously inconsistencies throughout sheets and blocks when they pour the foam uh, originally inside of the, the, the uh, cavities to create the, the exact densities that they need. When you're at 60 kilo, um, there is variations in the density throughout the sheets and blocks. So if this was a full piece of 60 kilo, um, I could get lucky and it is all just a little bit over 60 kilo, or I could have been unlucky and there's bits and patches of it that are under 60 kilo. And if you're under 60 kilo, we almost guarantee at full vacuum, you're going to crush the foam. At 40 kilo, don't even try it. Um, so anything less than 80 kilo, you start getting into the marginal areas if you're at 60 kilo, it's hit and miss, depending on the material you're using. So if you're using a polystyrene versus um, PVC, okay, slightly different materials, slightly different properties. So a 60 kilo uh, polystyrene is not the same as a 60 kilo PVC and the risk changes. Uh, but yeah, the lower the density is, the higher the risk of actually crushing the foam. And once you're under 80 kilo, you're in this, this region. If you're in that 60 kilo, then you're running really high risk. Anything under 60 kilo, almost guarantee you're going to crush the foam. Yeah. And this wasn't a crush though, was it? No. What no. about XPS foam? XPS foam. Okay. That's XPS is expanded polystyrene foam. Now it is okay with epoxy. Epoxy is quite inert and will not worry the polystyrene. Um, but if you've got a styrenated resin system, polyester or vinyl ester, uh, polystyrene foams, <laughs> and those two turn into a very gooey, yeah. congealed mess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got to make sure that yeah. whatever resin system you're using will match the foam. Correct. And everything in our boat that is not carbon is built with polyester. Okay. And because it's a polyester boat. It's a polyester boat. So, yeah. um, pourable foams, expanding pourable uh, foam. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Pourable foams in boats are just a disaster. And I have had a lot of experiences with it. Uh, most of the experiences are coming to try and help people that have got themselves into situations. Um, and every time there's been a poor foam or an expanding foam involved, it's always been a soggy, deteriorating, moldy, stinky mess. And it is not structural in any way, shape or form. No. And, and also, if you think about the process, how would you have poured it into there and how would you control the expansion? Yes. So, it, you know, you want to, if you're doing something that's sort of structurally critical, you want to be able to control the process. Yes. Am I correct? Yeah. 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 And again, polystyrene, uh, pour in foams, uh, you can't control the density. And we just spoke about earlier about the density issues. Mm. Um, so you end up generally speaking with higher densities at the bottom of a, a column like this and lower densities at the top. Um, and to be honest, um, the expanding foam would have just blown this off the, the wall. Uh, I had a lot of experience with um, expanding foams from polyurethane ones to single part, two part urethane ones to single part urethane ones to um, epoxy uh, foaming agent, uh, expanding foams and things like that. And they are extremely powerful when they start expanding. And one atmosphere of crushing this thing is not nothing compared to an expanding foam blowing out. It will blow shit apart. Um, but in general, 
don't use it on a boat because it will turn into a massive problem in the not too distant future. Um, it's not something that you should be using inside a marine environment. Oh, Tom's got a good one. Um, I-beam instead of a box beam. Okay, yes. Okay, yep. Yeah. Very good option. Yeah. Um, aesthetics win out here. <laughs> Um, okay, so you've got to always look at the, the overall finished picture. So yes, an I-beam technically would have worked perfectly fine here. The issue would have been is that to live with an I-beam in here would have been horrible. Um, so with the box beam, <laughs> with the box beam, it's very easy to walk past, not get snagged on, and it's very clean and easy to maintain as far as a finished product inside the boat is concerned. But technically speaking, an I-beam would have been worked. would have worked and it would have actually been a lighter uh, scenario, an option. Uh, as an engineering problem, an I-beam would have been better than this. Uh, but as a practical cruising boat solution, uh, the box beam is, is a better solution. Okay. And did we... I don't even know if we addressed this. <laughs> um <laughs> everyone, everyone that's watched the last video and, and read the comments, I, I think it goes without saying I've probably got enough experience hand laminating things to know when not, I not hand all, laminate yeah. things or uh, yeah. <laughs> infuse things. Not and all production my... boat builders will <laughs> hand laminate stuff either, but yeah, yeah. And you do you. Yeah, and yes, <laughs> uh, that is my day job. One of the things that I do... Uh, advise on is to boat yards and all the rest of it what process they should use so pretty a fate with that yeah um okay i think that's about it so i uh, hopefully we've covered all the questions um i will put the um the video on actually how shane repaired this up on our member site this week and it will be um live for everybody else Next yeah. week, um, and and no, I did not fix that. Do this all in one week, so yeah, these videos are fairly old. I'm uh, sorry, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm playing catch up at the moment. But yeah, Anna's playing massive catch up. Sorry, sorry for our hiatus from that, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Um, watch out for the next video on how Shane builds it. I I think it came together quite nicely, so I like the video that we've put together there. And as you can see, it's beautiful. Did a good job. Well done, babe. Yeah. And my, my, uh, yes, I had to eat a bit more weight because I had to put some food. Oh, yeah. In it was there. like an extra 200 grams, wasn't it? Didn't you say? Oh, was it a little bit more than that? No, less than that. But oh, okay. Yeah. There's probably an extra 100 grams and stuff in there, but yeah. That's a whole other thing talking about. Why I'm saving grams. Mm -mm. Okay. Because every gram counts. It does. It yeah. does. I mean, that's that's the whole point, and that's why we're sharing it. Yes, there are other solutions, and yes, you could totally, if you wanted to go and hand laminate something like this, or you wanted to do it out of a solid piece of foam, you know, knock yourself out. But our, yeah. our idea here is that we are going for as light and as strong as possible because we're chasing performance, and, um, and we're just sharing how we're doing it so we're not a bible you don't have to follow us uh, you know well we don't have please follow us <laughs> but yeah. you don't have to copy us yeah um and this is why yeah. i advise to yarns and people building custom boats uh build methods because there is more than one way to build a boat and there are multiple methodologies that are driven by certain criteria and the criteria for this is weight. Weight, 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 okay? And every gram counts. So weight is the biggest driver. Also, cost is a fairly big driver. Yeah, we don't have a great budget. No, we have a very, very, very limited budget. So um, that pushes us down these routes. Also, for me, quality of the laminates have to be good. Um, and if I can use a process, that has a higher quality of uh, finished lamination. And I tell you, my hand lamination's pretty reasonable. 
been doing it a pretty long time. <laughs> yeah. So these processes have to be pretty darn good to outdo my hand laminating. So, um, and when I say that these processes uh, beat the heck out of my hand laminating, that's because they beat the heck out of it and they are very good processes with very high quality. So, And they, they are fiddly. And you do need to know what you're doing. And it's, you absolutely. know, and when people are saying, oh, that looks really complicated, absolutely. But you've been doing it a long time and you know what you're doing. So for us, it's, you know, it's not a, a big deal. Yeah. Gonna, there is, it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. You guys have been very fortunate because I have not had an implosion or a core crush situation for a very long time um, because I've learned a lot of lessons over the years. Um, so you guys were really lucky to actually have got to see me from a failure. <laughs> well, and also that we work in the sort of industry where if you are sort of pushing the, the envelope with things, things do break. I mean, that's that's how we make a living is yeah. fixing a lot of stuff that... Um, Le is, learning these lessons. Is, is, you know, this, this is the challenge and this is what we want to do and how we're going to do it and make it as light as possible. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't work yeah and that is why yeah you know it's not a big deal like, I mean it is a big deal when it fails but people were like oh you handled it quite well well yeah because that it happens right and yeah, people, yeah it's, it's not what, the first time this has happened what's uh, important is how do you fix it yeah how do you recover yeah. from it yeah and of course when it happens you're like ah the world's just fallen down yeah. and i've got to take it all off and it's going to take yeah. me a week to grind it all up yeah. and all the rest of it and then you and then you go have dinner and you think about it and then you yeah. make a plan yeah and then yeah you come back um the things gel and you pull it off and it's like oh, okay i don't need to uh grind all the glass off because i've actually been able to remove all of the glass and all the difficult part so yeah it's very much a uh, um yeah, and, and you know, plan. recovering from your thing. And that's the difference between, um, we have this uh, great saying, that the difference between a, an amateur and a tradesperson is a, as a tradesperson can make a feature out of their f*** up. Um, so <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it's... Our feature. Yeah, it's knowing how to recover from situations and being able to keep going forward. And that's the difference between the amateurs and the people that have done this sort of thing before because they've experienced it before and they have that vi that uh what's the, what's the experience the knowledge of hindsight oh yeah benefit of hindsight benefit of hindsight where they know what's happened and they've experienced the problem and they've been able to see what can happen yeah. after it so. well you know we didn't crush the hole we didn't we didn't break the boat we just broke our part so then it was just okay it's disappointing because we've got limited time in which we want to do all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was the biggest That was the biggest tea. kicker. But, um, yeah, hopefully that you are all getting something out of it and um, we'll show what we did next week um, in the next video. All right. See you.